Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake 2. I'm Burning Dog Face. And uh, we're here in a tunnel. And it's about to get a lot drier in here. Shout out to Elthwar, who says that the light transferring mechanic is very thematic to the Dark Place. There is only so much light and safety that can be found here so it must be carefully shepherded around to help Alan Wake navigate. This also means the only safe place is around him, so even backtracking is still traveling into danger. And I really like that observation. Also to give a shout out to uh, Justin Jones, who says, This game is messing with my head. I am starting to wonder if Saga isn't anything more than a character created by Alan in order to help him get out of the dark place. You know, one, Alan narrates events before she has to go through them. Two, Saga uses manuscript fragments to upgrade her abilities. Three, Saga is incredibly blasé every time she encounters the paranatural slash everything else fucked up around the lake. And, uh, maybe I'm stating the obvious at all this and I'm just slow to catch on. Alternatively, maybe I'm reading, pun very much intended, into game mechanics. And, uh... Well, here's the crazy thing, Justin. From what I understand... Even if Saga Anderson never existed before she was written into existence, that doesn't mean she's not a real person. It seems like the created people would have... It, 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 the Dark Presence extrapolates from what you have written. If you just make up a person, then everything Alan doesn't write about their personality, their memories, their opinions, will get filled in somehow, so that they're a fully fleshed out person. It's just that their role in the story is only exactly what's written on the pages. And as for the pages predicting things before they happen, that's just an entire thing with this franchise. I found the page warning me that a take-in with a sh the chainsaw was going to show up soon, like ten minutes before it happened. Like, there was a page that very explicitly told me about the, uh, the bulldozer. Yeah, the boss fight against a bulldozer that had become a, uh, poltergeist. Like, I think the page explicit, like, you know, it, it wasn't, like, hinting at it. I'm saying it explicitly compared it to Stephen King's Christine. At the oil derrick, the wheel had been jammed into in, in the place and turned until the oil gurgled and flowed, thick and flammable. The warning lights were blinking at a fast rhythm, bright and steady, powered by the battery. The Kasabian CD was playing in the boombox, all distorted uh, guitars and intense beat. High above, some piece of orbital junk or another collided with a satellite, knocking it radically off course. That was an event from uh, American Nightmare. Honestly, if they don't want it to be considered canon anymore, they're really not doing a very good job of indicating that. And incidentally, when they say Kasabian CD, yes, there was a licensed song from Kasabian in uh, American Nightmare, and I got a copyright warning every time it appeared. There's like 20 lockers here. I can only open two of them. And that one's empty. Oh, this one has health and bullets in it, so I guess I'm okay with that. What a depressing place. Humming. Someone was humming. Was it worth the risk to go see who? God damn it. I'm gonna do it, aren't I? Police tape. Hello. Beware the dark. Hello. Oh. Hey, Alan. Oh! You snuck up on me. It's Tim Breaker! And he looks fine. I mean, he's here, so he's not fine, but he... Wait! Oh, god damn it! I've just realized he has absolutely no reason to know who Alan Wake is! We were playing as Saga when we met him. How does he... Well, I guess he knows because of the story, but... I don't understand anything! Just what?! What are you doing here?! Hello? Sorry. Have we met? Memory problems again, huh? 
Yeah, we've met. Tim Breaker. We've shared notes. Hey, I've made some progress on the map, if you want to take a look. I still haven't found my mystery man, though. You're making a map? Trying to. It's hard to map a dream, though. I keep ending up in unexpected places. I find interesting things like those strange markings that react to the light. But never the one thing that I'm looking for. Feel free to check the map out. Oh, I've been stockpiling supplies while I poke around. If you find a stash, take anything you need. I appreciate the help. Who's the mystery man? Who's this mystery man? Oh, it wouldn't be much of a mystery if I knew. All I have is a name. No. Warlandor. Oh. A talk show host? No. No, that doesn't sound like him. The guy has many disguises, but a talk show host? Warlandor. I'll keep looking. I think there's spots of blood on his pants, but I, do I can only zoom in by pointing the gun, and I don't want to get the wrong impression by pointing a, re a revolver at his crotch. Orlin Door. <laughs> well, that's my crazy wall. I'm just trying to make sense of things. It, the, picture, the picture. The picture looks a lot like the guy. Day. Trade you walls, yes. Don't judge me. Uh, let's see. Remember, I was at the morgue. I was about to give the evidence to the FBI. Door transported me here to this dream reality. Why? Who, went, wha, who, where, why, motive, why me? And the picture just looks like a drawing of that guy from the talk show. The red-headed woman, me but not me, others I know, yet they are different. The red-headed woman? Is that Jesse Faden? Uh, she was the protagonist of Control, the new director of the FBC. Facts, missing time, no memory, until now. Uh, until now. Have I always ended up here? Will I forget when I get out? Abducted? Aliens? Door? UFOs? Polyhedrons? Dreams! Me, but not me. Others, yet I know others I know, yet they are different. The red-headed woman? So this is his version of the the, the room. You lost her. You die here. Don't write. Lost. Man, they really aren't kidding around with all this shit. Why can I not look at the map? Okay. Subway. Oh! A bunch of circles marking off important things, I guess. Noted. On a side note, I really like that the backgrounds and all the maps in the dark place are black. As opposed to most maps, it seem to be white. On a side note, with the yellow lights and everything, this room is way dimmer than I would expect someone who knows anything about the dark to make it. He's even rigged up a bed here! Huh. It's probably the solid, the nicest looking mattress I've ever seen sitting on a skid. Okay. I can't believe I didn't realize his name is Time Breaker with a letter missing. What happened to Sarah Breaker? See you around, Alan. Uh, see you, Tim. I gather that the reason uh, he's in the game, I don't remember if I mentioned this before, is that the, uh, Remedy's leaning hard into their RCU, Remedy Connected Universe, and, uh,. Well, Microsoft owns the rights to Quantum Break, because they were the ones who published that game and made it exclusive to Xbox, and uh, Rockstar, too. It was Rockstar Games, the GTA people, have the rights to uh, Max Payne, uh, the, fr the IP. So they haven't, although they, I don't think they've done anything with it since Max Payne 3, like, ten years ago. They made one, it didn't go over very well, and they never touched it again. 
Mr. Randolph liked Rose, that little smile she had, how she was still sweet when life had tried to, so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer, but those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble. And they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. Yoink! didn't ring. Was Tim the guy on the phone? Will that red barrel explode if I shoot it? This isn't really that kind of game. Alright, you fuck. Yeah. No, the barrel is hollow. It wouldn't do that anyway. But there is something behind him that could be a locker. So I'm going to try and hug the wall. Oh, good. I can't interact with that. It was just a reflection. Excuse me. I'll just leave you to fume about how much you. Hey! Oh, good. There was one behind the door. Oh god. Ah! Don't forget to use safe havens to hide from enemies and receive healing in combat. Damn it. So I opened the door, there was another shadow behind it, and immediately knocked me on my ass. Oh god. Shout out to Rachel Starwin, who says. Well, first she put an F in the chat, and then said, Thanks for the most unpleasant game over sequence, Alan Wake 2. Oof. Oh, he doesn't do it automatically, my bad. And back into the world. Oh no, I'm in the save room. Oh god. Oh, am I going to have to redo all of that? Because that's going to be a huge bummer if it's true. I know a quick way to find out. No! Ah, oh. ah! Oh, the words of aid. Fuck me. Okay. I'm going to have to do a jump cut and get past these bits I just did, and I guess I'll save in between the uh, returns into this area. So at the very least, I won't have to go through all that stuff in the tunnel over there. Uh, uh, before I go, shout out to Clunk279 who asks, What writing style is Control based on? I'm guessing Lovecraft. That's a good guess, and there is a lot of stuff mixed in with Control. But as I understand it, the original inspiration, and this is something the developers have said explicitly in interviews, was uh, the SCP Foundation, the sort of open source, free, uh, you know, free to edit, creepy pasta collection that takes the form of the fictional case files of, wait for it, an ominous organization of questionable morality that studies, uh, performs research on, and captures supernatural objects, creatures, and locations. The difference being that, uh... The tunnels were a maze. The blood trail led me on. The primary difference I can detect being that the uh, SCP Foundation is more or less explicitly malevolent. Like, just, you know, uh, uh, erasing people's memories if they've seen anything, murdering the occasional witness, locking up people who've had exposure to the supernatural. Whereas the FPC keep making things worse by accident, but, uh... At least they're not trying to. I guess that's not quite fair, some of the, uh... 
Researchers surely give a damn at the SCP Foundation. I found a reference to the Foundation in the main game of uh, Control that I thought was a nod to the origin there, but uh, I realized much later that it was actually a reference to uh, the area I was exploring in the DLC known as the Foundation. All right, off I go then. So things are going poorly. I uh, made it past the hallucination with Booker and uh, ca somehow caught the attention of one of the shadows in the hall next to that who beat me to death immediately, like two hits. Although as I'm over here, I do find this box I didn't find before. Shit. That's not so bad. Two flares. Two flares, a trauma pad, I don't know what that is, and ooh, one of those big health kits. And again, duct tape I cannot take. No, that's why. Oh, a flashbang grenade! Throwable grenade emits, in, it emits intense burst of light, inflicting heavy damage and stunning anything nearby. Yeah, those really fucked him up in the first game. annoying. But I did all that stuff again. Oh, no way this was the train. Alright, just gonna go catch up with myself. Why does it give me access to the thing here? I'm not in the collapsed tunnel. My writing oh. was affecting reality. Alright, the cult symbol doesn't actually change. This wall definitely did, though. If I swap that up for murder cult. Then all the regular graffiti gets changed to hands dragged down in black, splotchy ink. I'm not sure that's ink. I think that might just be the residue of the shadows. The gunk that the, uh, the Taken leave behind. First game, there were a number of things where it's like, well, this area is covered in crap, and you need to burn it off with your flashlight before you'll, it'll hurt you if you touch it. Keep your subway clean. But friend, I do not own a subway. New York is always changing. It will change you, too. Sonny tells me it's not actually 3 o'clock. Ever felt lost, confused, stuck in a loop? It's time to wake up. On a side note, I could have sworn I heard one of the shadows I passed by earlier say, A Wake. It sounds like a fake character name. Oh boy. Right, so this time I'm not going to go down the alley. And I will have my flashlight on for when I open the door.
I was told they can hear me. Also, that is not the gun I wanted to use for this. But... Quick glance. The other one's not there this time. Great. So I was mistaken. I, he, Alan didn't even reach out for the door. When I hit A, the guy kicked it open from the other side. At least I didn't take any damage from the scripted attack. Oh, there's another one of those. They keep Someone keeps doing that, finding a way underneath the stairs and painting these silhouettes on the walls beneath them. Oh, so goddamn close to a save point! Actually, that's a good idea. And then... Sorry about that, I needed to sneeze. The bit there, use a hand flare to escape the enemy's grapple unharmed, reminds me of a thing I saw about the, uh, the remake of Resident Evil 1. But, you know, the one they made years and years ago. That's better, yeah. What I heard was, uh, that it had defensive weapons that you can't use in regular attacks, but if you get grappled by a zombie, you can use up one of these defensive weapons, where it's like, you just, uh, stab him in the fucking eye with a very small knife and it shoves him back. But he's a zombie, so he keeps coming at you after that. It just breaks off the grapple. Or, you know, you jam a taser under his chin and let the entire charge loose. And because technically electricity is flying along the, uh, the nervous system, the zombie can't move. The memory is fading like a dream. I must hold on to it. I remember right. an awful beacon in the darkness. A scene of a ritualistic murder site in the subway tunnels. Is it a previous draft of my writing? Must be. I've been trying to shape the dark place around me, but so much fades away. Even my memory of the process, washed away by dark waves. But some things remain. The darkest, nastiest elements. Like the murder site. It's my goal. A stepping stone to travel deeper to escape. Write a narrative that takes me there. Casey will lead me to it. You know, the worst part is, that probably didn't even make sense to Alan. Hmm. Hmm. Seems that I have six of those trauma pads. I'm gonna put two of them into this uh, shoebox. And I want to do this. And then I'm going to do this. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you on the next episode of Let's Play Alan Wake 2 when our journey into the darkness continues. And we find out what's up this ladder. I'm guessing more horror. <laughs> oh boy. Wish me luck, Burning Dog fans. And stay in the light.